night, good evening, morning, whichever time it is. Probably watching this 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't know, for the folks that watch it after the fact. I am going to be working out the May June 2022 Computer Science Unit 2. This exam took place some um, kind of what date took place on. It took place on the 6th of June, yeah, 6th of June, 2022. Let's try to answer the questions. I have not looked at the paper in advance. I think I'll look at the SQL question, I believe. I'm not too sure which one I looked at, but I look at it too much. So let's see what we have here. Da -da -da -da. Right. The funny thing is, I did a poll on Instagram of people who uh, want to see it. 20 something people said yes but just so you learn something in life kids <laughs> whenever you do a poll on instagram people just answer for fun <laughs> and the actual number of people that say yes to something all right let's go number one describe the main difference between a stack and a queue the main difference is one is pi four one is lifo that's one they said the main difference, so I would guess to see. A stack uses last LIFO, sorry. LIFO, which means last in, first out. I just explain the same thing in different ways, so I'll take that. They actually mean different. They say mean differences. So I can't do anything right. A Q uses FIFO first in, first out, which means the value that went in first will be the first value to be removed yeah um so there are come there are like compelling answers that you could have for this too you could have some more compelling answers like um like A stack takes on the top while a queue takes on the bottom. You know, stack from top, queue from bottom. This one would be an answer that some people may fight for. I don't know what the examiners may be thinking if they um if they say, well, yeah. We'll accept this and we'll accept that. But the question said the main difference. And one of the first things this teacher about us talking about queue is that FIFO, LIFO. Last in, first out, first in, first out. So I, I would assume that this will be the, the, the one thing that they would have on their, um, on their answer sheets. But I can't say, I can't say for sure. I can't say for sure that you will get the stack. Comes on the top and the queue, it's on the bottom. Can't. But we see how it goes. So chances are it's late in the night and you're watching this past paper video hoping that you get the answers to the past paper that you've been looking for for all this time and you're happy that it actually exists on YouTube. Well, go leave it up to the YouTube algorithm to show you the rest of um, answers. I have an app that's called Learn It by Make It Simple TT and it has all the past paper answers in chronological order for the past 10 years, maybe 12, depending on the time that you're watching this video. It might have a lot more. The app is called Learn It. Go find it, download it, link will be in the description. And if you want to see the PDF with the actual crap of foot handwriting that I have with the answers, so you could actually scroll through the PDF and look at the answers as it was written. Instead of watching the video, hey, you 
could do that too. Download the app now. All right, back to the answers. Explain the function of the following operations used by a queue. So they don't want you to write the code, they want you to explain it. So they want to say, this is what the exams tend to do. Like people can come off code real easy, but to explain it and understand what is actually taking place, not everybody could do that. So uh, NQ, NQ will um, add a value to the rear of the queue and increment the value of rear. When finished. Yeah, two marks uh, basically yeah, explaining what the NQ function will do. DQ will remove a value from the front of the queue and increment the value of front. As I was straightforward as it gets and well, I don't know why I have all those lines for, but I can guarantee you somewhere else on this paper, they have a question that will give you a little bit of lines to say a lot, because <laughs> they tend to do that. Number three, I mean part C, use code to write a function that adds an integer to a stack. Your arguments for your function should be the stack and the number to be added. Your function should not call any other functions. See this part here where it says should not call any other functions. I mean, the car user is full or is empty. If your user is full or is empty, they will get mad at you. You don't want them to get mad at you. So, um, functional add a stack. So, void um, push. Your argument should be the stack. So, int stack. Your buckets and the value int value cool. we get those two and now our job is to open quotation open brackets um next what we want to do we want to push the value okay so yeah let's check to make sure the stack is empty so yeah let's say if um if um top is not equal to minus one then no if top is equal to minus one no what are we trying to do oh, sorry i lost myself for a second there we are trying to add an integer so you're trying to push so you can't add to a stack if it is full so if top is equal to max we are assuming that it have a max right well i guess you'll have to assume that there is a max because they told us clearly don't call any other function so we are assuming that our max was set so if top is equal to max then we will um we will do this we will push no, we will print f. Print f the stack is full. I was going to say, um, what did we do? Right, so print the stack is full. So top is equal to max. Oh, so we'll see max minus one. If top is equal to max minus one, because max will give any size of the array, but the array does start from zero, so it should be max minus one. Um. Oh yes, right me. Yeah, you had that correct in the chat there, right me. Thanks. I wasn't really watching the chat yet. Well, the access to say if you say the stack inserts and remove from the top. Um, uh, I think I answered that before. And so, can you do this for C-Sec? Yeah, once I get the C-Sec paper, I'll work it out here. All right, else, um, else we have to put curly brackets for the else because there is stuff that we have to insert the else. Else, you insert any value, so you're going to say stack location top is equal to value and then 
top plus plus and close that off and then you don't have to return anything because this is a push cycle Oof. a lot of extra lines there just in case you probably made a mistake all right let's go again using a label diagram describe a singly link list five marks how much marks was this one was seven marks for the pop for the push boy what they give it away marks they give away marks here boy seven marks for the push must be nice all right, describe a, using a, a label diagram, describe a single link. So, right, so your label diagram must have a head. It must have the head pointing to a node. Uh, we're calling this node. And then you call this data and pointer. This pointer is going to point to another node, which will have data again. And this will have pointer. Label each one of them and then the node is going to go down to a um, ground looking thingy. If you do physics, you know that's ground. And you name that now. You could put three nodes if you want. You could put two nodes if you want. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So what we're going to say is, um, what we're going to do is we're going to say now, a head pointer points to a node that is made up of data and a pointer that points to the next node this repeats until the last node points to null yeah full stop five box i guess you'll get either three for the diagram two for the explanation or two for the explanation three for the diagram i don't know i think they might get three for the diagram because you have three important things which is the head the nodes and the null that might be three marks and then the next explanation for the two marks, I guess. Um, B, the following seven integers are stored in an array as shown below. Wow, this, this black market version of the um, paper, it's cringy, boy. Like whoever used their phone to scan this one, they didn't really use it. Anyhow, moving on. I mean, I've seen some, seen some black man, black one, but yeah. Alright, the following integers are stored in array shown before. Um, right. Let's do this again. Right. The following seven integers are stored in an array shown below. Alright, using a selection sort algorithm, show the elements of the array after each of the first four passes. Alright. Alright, so selection sort, it will lock the first value, compare it with everything else, and then swap the smallest one. So the first value, 34, will swap with 1. So 1 will go here, 5 will go there, 10 will go there, the 34 will take the place of the 1, and then you have 9, 23, and 14. Alright, so then this will, that 1 will lock in place there, so now we have to compare the 5 with the smallest value after that. 5 will compare, and it will find nothing to swap with, so it will just be like, okay, cool, no swapped. Um, so that will give us one and five. So one and five, and then we have 10, 34, 9, 23, and 14. All right, good. All right, so now we're going to compare the 10 with anything else that's smaller. The 10 and the 9 will stop. So we got one, five, nine, 34, 10, 23, and 14. Cool, 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 cool. And then from there, the one, three, and the one, five, and nine will lock in place. So we have one, five, nine, and then the 34 will look for the lowest value, which will be 10. So the 10 will swap here, and the 34 will go up there. 23 and 14. Cool. And that was locked. That'll be first four passes. Aha!
That's cake. Um, describe the principles behind the binary search. Oh Lord, I hate when they bring this question. For you to have to explain our binary search. One year it'll be eight marks, and next year it'll be six marks, another year five marks, and it'll be like oh, wow boy. I don't know what to say. Describe the principles behind the binary search. Yeah. All right, so let's see if we could break down the binary search principles into something I'll get us six months. Step one, start theory. They say they want the principles and I'll put the array must be sorted. The array must be sorted. Step two. The midpoint is found by low plus high divided by two. I don't know, pretty much. Yeah. Three. The midpoint is compared with the search value or if the search value matches the, the, the value at mid it returns true or found five if if the search value is greater than the midpoint low is equal to mid plus one all right if the search value is greater than one they carry up low by one cool um otherwise i don't know you could probably say else i just describe any whole algorithm for them because yeah otherwise high is equal to mid minus one then from there you will see um, step six, the new mid is found and seven, the process repeats until, um, low is greater than high or the mid matches the value all right let me ho hold it like that they have it for six marks i put seven points you can't they can't get vexed with you i mean can they get vexed with you no they can't get vexed with you if you get them get them all of that seven things seven things okay cool that's the end of section one. Wow. I barely... Uh... <laughs>